Yo, what's going on guys? Coltimush back at it with a $550 gaming PC build. This is a great entry level build to do some 1080p gaming. Obviously, you're not going to be able to max out all games at 1080p, but you will be able to play all games at 1080p at very good settings and very good frame rates. This build also provides a pretty good route to upgrade. If you do want to upgrade this PC in the future, you will be able to do that. So without further ado, let's get right into this with the CPU of the build. I went with the Intel Core i3 4133.4 GHz dual core processor. Now, yes, the dual core name is going to scare a lot of people off. The i3 does also have hyper threading adding to virtual core so that's definitely nice now as far as video editing rendering and live streaming goes the i3 is absolutely terrible i can tell you guys from personal experience i had an i3 at one point and doing video editing and live streaming on that was abysmal but as far as actual gaming performance goes the i3 is not that bad if you pair this with a decent video card you can actually still run games like the witcher 3 wild hunt at high settings and we definitely got a good video card in this build and this cpu is only 104 dollars right now and that's definitely a good price for the i3 and you'll be able to just stick with the stock cooler since obviously you're not going to overclock the i3 so for 104 dollars this was a very budget oriented cpu that's strictly for gaming if you're looking to do video editing rendering and editing i would not get the i3 at all but for just gaming performance it does really well for the price for the motherboard i went with the asrock h97 anniversary atx lj1150 motherboard for only 70 dollars i wanted to get a motherboard that was going to get the job done but also be very cheap at the same time and the h97 from asrock for 70 dollars was definitely that it's on the lj1150 socket and obviously it has the h97 chipset so while you won't be able to do overclocking on it if you do upgrade say to an i5 in the future it's still fairly good and honestly if you are at this budget i don't think you're in the market to pick up a 230 dollars cpu anytime in the near future but if you do want to upgrade to an i5 4460 in the future you can do that and that'll be great. It's got four RAM slots up to 1600 megahertz and up to 32 gigabytes of max memory. It's got RAID support, no Crossfire or SLI support, but it does have six SATA 6 gigabit per second port and onboard USB 3 headers. So for $70, this is the perfect kind of motherboard, a great motherboard from ASRock that's gonna get the job done and definitely not break the bank too bad. For RAM, I went with G-Skill Ripjaws X-Series 8GB, 2-4GB sticks running at DDR3 1600MHz for $50. It's 8GB of RAM, 2-4GB sticks, not much more to say. Obviously, you're not going for a 16GB configuration right now, but in the future, if you do want to, you can, but I really don't see that as an essential upgrade for this kind of a build. And even in a budget-end build, you definitely don't want to go with 4GB. 8GB is so cheap nowadays that you might as well go with that, and it's going to help out in a lot of games. Battlefield 4, Witcher 3, all those games are going to take full advantage of having 8 gigs of RAM. And you definitely want that if you're looking for a gaming rig. For storage, I went with the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 3.5 inch 7200 RPM hard drive for $50. It's a 1TB hard drive, decided no SSD for this build since you can get a 120GB SSD for the price of the Caviar Blue. But if you're buying a gaming rig, chances are you're downloading the latest games, you're buying a lot of games on Steam on sale, and you know, with each game being 10 to 15GB at a minimum, if you only have a 120GB SSD, that's gonna get filled up way too quick. Get a Caviar Blue 1 terabyte for $50, and in the future, SSD prices are just going to get lower and lower. So for now, $50 for a Caviar Blue 1 terabyte is definitely a good deal. You're going to be able to store all your games, movies, pictures, all those kinds of things on the Caviar Blue. For the video card, I went with the XFX Radeon R9 283GB Black Edition Double Dissipation Video Card. Now, this GPU is around $200 right now, but there is also a $30 mail-in rebate. So definitely, if you're using the mail-in rebate, the R9 280 coming out to $170 is an awesome deal. Without the rebate for $200, it's still a very good mid-range video card. And the great thing about the R9 280 is that it has 3GB of video buffer, which is fantastic because honestly, at this point, having a 2GB video card is going to limit you in some games like Batman Arkham Knight. And the R9 280 for $200 and 170 after the mail-in rebate, you're going to be able to run games like The Witcher 3 at high settings and still get 45 to 50 frames per second, which is definitely playable. You'll be able to play games like Battlefield 4, no problem, Dying Light, upcoming games like Fallout 4, Star Wars Battlefront. You're going to be able to play all those games at very high settings. You won't be able to max out every single game, but for a lot of them, all you'll have to do is turn down some of the settings, and then you'll be getting 45 to 50, even 60 frames per second. And obviously, if you're playing games like League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, World of Warcraft, you'll be just fine with the R9 280. So the 280 is a great mid-range video card to do some 1080p gaming. While you won't be maxing out all the higher-end games, you're definitely going to be getting respectable performance and respectable settings. For the power supply, I went with the XFX 550W 80 Plus Bronze Certified Power Supply. $55 for a high-quality 550W power supply is definitely a good deal. No reason to get anything higher since you're not going to be going for a Crossfire SLI configuration in this build. And the XFX power supplies have really good reviews and this 550W, it was cheap and it's going to power the build no problem. Finally, for the case, I went with the NZXT Source 210 
Elite White ATX Mintire case. This case comes in white or black. Just pick the color of your preference. The NZXT Source T10 is not amazing. I'm not going to act like it is, but it's only $40, which is absolutely fantastic for a Mintire case. And at the end of the day, at a $550 budget, that's what you want out of a case. You're going to want something that's going to get the job done. It's going to aesthetically look decent, but at the end of the day, you're not going to be staring at your case all the time. You're not going to be ripping it open and looking at the insides all the time. You don't need that side window. So for $40, the 210 Elite, it's got front USB 3 headers. Aesthetically, it looks fine. And as far as ventilation and room for upgrades, that's pretty decent as well. So all around, the Source 210 Elite is a pretty good case in this build. So thanks for watching this video, guys. As always, if you have a request for a future video, leave it in the comments section down below. If you like this video, go ahead and like this video. If you dislike, obviously hit that dislike button. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Peace out.